kingdom in that good news. In that good news. Jesus, sing that good news, good news. I got a robe in that kingdom, in that good news. I got a robe in that kingdom, in that good news. I got a robe in that kingdom, in that good news. I got a robe in that kingdom, in that good news. I got a robe in that kingdom, in that good news. I got a robe in that kingdom, in that good news. I got a robe in that kingdom, in that good news. I got a robe in that kingdom, in that good news. I got a robe in that kingdom, in that good news. I got a robe in that kingdom, in that good news. I got a robe in that kingdom, in that good news. I got a robe in that kingdom, in that good news. I got a robe in that kingdom, in that good news. I got a robe in that kingdom, in that good news. I got a robe in that kingdom, in that good news. I got a robe in that kingdom, in that good news. I got a robe in that kingdom, in that good news. I got a robe in that kingdom, in that good news. I got a robe in that kingdom, in that good news. I got a robe in that kingdom, in that good news. I got a robe in that kingdom, in that Shoulder up my cross, then take it home with you, my Jesus, in that good news. Good news, good news, good news, good news, good news my life. I ain't let good news, good news, my life. So did you know that Jesus has an inheritance? Yeah. Jesus is going to uh, get something uh -huh. as a reward. Yes. Uh, in fact, it says that Jesus has been appointed heir of all things. Mm. So what if Jesus went to the cross and got nothing out of it? Mm. Would that be that that would be that would be wrong? Mm -hmm. uh, but as a, a result of what Jesus has done, God has promised him an eternal inheritance, uh -huh. and this inheritance is guaranteed to him because God has appointed it. Yeah, that's right. He's appointed uh -huh. him heir. Amen. Hebrews one verses one and two. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, yeah. by whom also he made the world. Mm -hmm. So Jesus has been appointed by God to a position, mm -hmm. a position of being an heir. Yeah. Uh -huh. So what is an heir? An heir is somebody who's going to receive an inheritance. Uh -huh. Somebody who's going to receive a blessing. Something good is, is promised to uh -huh. this person. Amen. This person who is an heir. And then, he's an heir, but of what? Well, you can just look around. Everything you see is going to go to Jesus. Everyone you see belongs to Jesus. Amen. Jesus is going to inherit it. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, everything you don't see goes to him, too. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that's what all things mean. Uh-huh, yeah. In case you're not sure on the definition of all. Mm. <laughs> now, first of all, I want to establish that this is not a, an optional inheritance or a potential inheritance or mm -hmm. a probable inheritance. Uh -huh. yeah. When God appoints something, it's unchangeable. Yeah. So when God says that Jesus is heir of all things, nothing anybody does is going to change that. Yeah, that's right. If somebody tries to keep their things, well, Jesus is going to get them anyway. Yeah, if right. someone tries to keep themselves, mm. Jesus is going to get you anyway, no mm. matter what. Mm -hmm. Now, an example of this, of God's appointing something, is 2 Samuel 17, 14. This is when Absalom had rebelled. Uh, and there was this man, Ahithophel, mm -hmm. who had good counsel. And I'm looking forward to hearing about this mm -hmm. uh, in more detail later on. But it says, Absalom and all the men of Israel said, The counsel of Hushai, the archite, is better than the counsel of Ahithophel. For the Lord had, had appointed to defeat the good counsel of Ahithophel, mm -hmm. to the intent that the Lord might bring evil upon Absalom. Now, some background on Ahithophel's counsel. It, the Bible says this. It says that inquiring of him was like inquiring of an oracle of God. Yeah, that's right. So you don't get much better than Ahithophel's counsel. Mm -hmm. And so you would think that they would, they would have taken his counsel. But when God appointed to defeat it, yeah. it didn't matter how good the counsel was. <laughs> Since God appointed it to be defeated, they... They ignored it. Yeah. So when God appoints something, it's not it's not an option. Mm. It's not Amen. just a possibility. Jesus is going to be heir of all things. Amen. He will. There is no doubt about it. Amen. Now let's 
get some background on heirs. <clears throat> in Deuteronomy 21.15, it says, If a man have two wives, one beloved and another hated, and they have borne him children, both the beloved and the hated. And if the firstborn son be hers that was hated, then it shall be, when he maketh his sons to inherit that, that which he hath, that he may not make the son of the beloved firstborn before the son of the hated, which is indeed the firstborn. But he shall acknowledge the son of the hated for the firstborn by giving him a double portion of all that he hath. For he is the beginning of his strength, the right to the firstborn is his. So what is God saying here? Well, what I see in this is that God is the one who determines the heirs. Mm -hmm. We can't go shuffling the heirs around ourselves. Yeah. God said, God, God made it so that the one born first, he's going to be the heir. It doesn't matter what you want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Genesis 15.1 and after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abraham said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And Abraham said, Behold to me, thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thy heir, mm. but he that co shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. Mm -hmm. Now Abram thought that he had this figured out. He thought mm. that, well, he didn't have any children, so it was going to go to Eliezer. Mm. Well, God changed that. Yeah. God says, nope, it's going to be my way. God's <laughs> right. the one who sets the heir. Yes, and right. nothing we do or want really has any effect on that. Mm -hmm. God's the yeah, determiner yeah. of the heir. Yes. Yeah. And when yeah. God said it, it was set. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Ishmael couldn't take Isaac's place That's as right. heir. None of, none of the other people were going to be heir after mm -hmm. God had determined that it was going to be Isaac. Amen. Now what happens to the heir? Mm. There's, there's one heir Genesis 25, 5. And Abraham gave all that he had unto Isaac. But unto the sons of the concubines which Abraham had, Abraham gave gifts and sent them away from Isaac his son while he yet lived eastward unto the east country. So I just love this type how Isaac gets everything. Yeah. He said, Abraham gave all that he had unto Isaac. Yes. Well, this sounds a lot like Hebrews yeah. 1. That he's heir of all things. Now the one appointed by God gets gets the whole thing, yeah. the whole package. Mm -hmm. And of course, this is Jesus. Psalm eighty nine twenty six. He shall cry unto me, Thou art my Father, my God, and the Rock of my salvation. Also, I will make him my firstborn, mm -hmm. higher than the kings of the earth. Mm -hmm. My mercy will I keep for him forevermore and my covenant shall stand fast with him mm -hmm. so it says I will make him my firstborn mm -hmm. God made Jesus his firstborn <laughs> or the one who receives mm -hmm. the heir the one who gets the birthright Jesus is that that anointed Amen. one mm -hmm. Amen. Psalm 16 6 now remember this is the thou wilt not leave my soul in hell song mm -hmm. this is talking mm -hmm. about Jesus and it says, The lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places, yea, I have a goodly heritage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Jesus does have a goodly heritage, Amen. a good inheritance mm -hmm. coming to him. He's going to inherit all things. <clears throat> so let's look at the nature of Christ's inheritance. First of all, what is included in Christ's inheritance? 1 Corinthians 15.25 says, for he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. Mm -hmm. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Mm -hmm. So Jesus is here, he's reigning mm -hmm. and waiting till all the enemies are put underneath him. Mm -hmm. So really Amen. Jesus is going to inherit his enemies. 
And what that means is that each enemy will be fully defeated mm -hmm. and fully submitted yeah. to his will, subjected to Christ. Mm -hmm. That's what it means when Christ is going to inherit his enemies. Mm -hmm. See, when all when you say all things, mm -hmm. you're including you're including his enemies here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Psalm 110 mm -hmm. 1. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand mm -hmm. until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Yeah. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion, rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Mm -hmm. So this tells me this is an unchallenged rule. Yeah. When Jesus inherits everything, there is nobody, nobody who's going to still have rebellion against him. They're going to be fully subjected Amen. to his mm -hmm. purposes and to his will. Amen. Psalm 2. Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and mm. cast away their cords from us. Yeah. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. Mm. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Yeah. I will declare the decree the Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Amen. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, yeah. and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Mm -hmm. So here are these people who are rebelli rebelling against Christ, making plans to throw away God's cords off them, <clears throat> to be their own gods, yet God just laughs at them and says that he has set Jesus as king. Amen. And mm -hmm. Jesus receives them. These people who are rebellious, they are given to Christ to break like a clay pot. Mm. Yes. Amen. 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 So part of Jesus' inheritance is fully and finally silencing those who hate him. Mm. Amen. Amen. Yeah, amen. 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 But Psalm 2 continues here. Not all people are sentenced to this destruction. Uh -huh. Psalm 2 verse 10 says, Be wise now therefore, O ye kings. Be instructed, O ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son, lest he be angry and ye perish from the way, when his wrath is kindled but a little. Mm -hmm. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, you know some of the people that he inherited, inherits as part of all things mm -hmm. will be destroyed. Yeah. Completely uh -huh. silenced and subjected to him. Yeah. But there's also those people who willingly and joyfully submit themselves yes, unto amen. him. Amen. There are those kings of the earth who mm -hmm. are wise and instructed. Uh-huh. <clears throat> There are those who kiss the Son, and those who put their trust in Him. They are also part of Christ's inheritance. Yes, amen. I read from Psalm 110 earlier. Uh, the verse that I didn't read is verse 3. It says, Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. Yes. Amen. So in the day of Jesus' power, when mm -hmm. he receives his inheritance, mm -hmm. well, he's going to have some willing people. Yeah. Amen. See, the, the, the wicked people being silenced, that's not the main point. Uh -huh. The main point is thy people, yeah. and thy people are willing. Amen. Deuteronomy 32, verse 9 says, For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. So we, as his people, the people who love him and serve him, we are the main part of God's uh -huh. of Christ's inheritance. Yes. When he's the heir of all things, he's thinking about us mm -hmm. primarily. Mm -hmm. Now, what does Jesus want most for an inheritance? Well, I have to ask the question, what did he sacrifice the most to obtain? Uh -huh. It's us. It's his church. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And we are, we are that inheritance. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> So, the inheritance of Christ is both the wicked and the righteous all go to Christ. 
The nature of Christ's inheritance is also eternal. Daniel 7, verse 11. And I beheld then, because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake, I beheld even till the beast was slain, and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. Mm -hmm. As concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. And I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, and came to the Ancient of the Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and yeah. glory and a kingdom mm -hmm. that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. <clears throat> so Jesus' dominion is everlasting. There are inheritances on this earth, and earthly inheritances can disappear pretty quickly. <clears throat> We even have the example of, of the prodigal son. He wasted it all. It didn't take him long to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Well, Jesus' inheritance, it says, is an everlasting Amen. inheritance. Amen. He gets everything. He gets everything forever. Yeah. So <laughs> Jesus is heir of all things in that way as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. he is <clears throat> the nature of this inheritance is also... <clears throat> that it has been planned since eternity past. <clears throat> Colossians 1.16 For by him were all things created, that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. Yeah, amen. Everything was made for Jesus. Yes. We see here uh, once again saying that that any, any power, any people, anything was created for him and going to be given him. But it says that they were created for yeah. him. Uh -huh. That means that at, at the beginning of time, these things were set out yes. to be given to uh -huh. him. This is the plan since the beginning. Mm -hmm. Continuing reading. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. <clears throat> now all this inheritance is for the purpose of glorifying Christ. The inheritance, the inheritance is really not the main point. The main point is Christ, and the inheritance serves to point to Christ and glorify him. Amen. Amen. He is purposed in himself that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. <clears throat> He's been appointed the heir of all things. Everything going to be brought together in him. Mm -hmm. And then I'll read, I'll read one more verse from Colossians 1. It says, For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Uh -huh. Amen. And this moves on to my next point. Jesus isn't being given the inheritance grudgingly. This is, this is what the Father most wants to do. He wants to make Jesus inherit everything. Nobody pressured him to do this. Mm -hmm. This was appropriate. Christ deserves all things. Yes, amen. Our text from Hebrews, uh, the very next verse kind of goes on to expound how Jesus deserves each of all things. He's appointed an heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Uh -huh. These are things that Jesus has done that make him worthy of this inheritance. Mm -hmm. Who else would you appoint to be over all things? Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Revelation 5, verse 9. They sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, 
and hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand, and thousands of thousands. Mm -hmm. And what are they all saying? Mm -hmm. With a loud voice, worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and mm -hmm. wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now everyone who can see clearly will acknowledge that Jesus is worthy to receive yes. all things. Amen. It's Amen. only right that yeah. Jesus Amen. gets it all uh -huh. Amen. because of Amen. what he has done. Yes. Amen. He was appointed an heir because of his faithfulness to do the work of the Father. Mm -hmm. Philippians 2 who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men mm -hmm. and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself mm -hmm. and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross mm -hmm. wherefore God also hath highly exalted That's him right. and given him a name which is above every name that in the, at the name of Jesus Every knee should bow, mm -hmm. of things in heaven and things in earth and mm -hmm. things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, mm -hmm. to the glory of God the Father. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So this Amen. isn't this isn't just that Jesus happened to get this inheritance. Yeah. No, it says the reason God highly exalted him and gave mm -hmm. gave him this is because he was faithful to That's do right. the work of the Father. That's right. Perfectly to give to suffer more, to humble himself more uh -huh. than anyone else. <clears throat> yeah. Jesus, Jesus is the only, the only candidate in this race. Mm -hmm. He's, he's the only one who's, who's even close to being worthy. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hebrews ten eleven. Every priest standeth daily, ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God from mm -hmm. henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. Mm -hmm. So right now he's sitting here, he's, he's waiting, he's waiting for this inheritance. Mm -hmm. so why is he doing this? It's because he because of a finished atonement work. Uh -huh. Because he did what none of the other priests could do. Mm -hmm. He's the one worthy to receive all things, mm -hmm. to have his enemies be made his footstool. And one more on this. Romans 8, 17. If children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, mm -hmm. if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. <clears throat> Now this verse is talking about us, but here it is, it's, it's linking suffering with heirship. Mm -hmm. If we suffer, we are heirs. We are glorified. Well, who suffered more than Jesus? Mm -hmm. there, is, there is no man, no angel, no one suffered like Jesus did. Mm -hmm. And therefore, no one is worthy of, of the reward that Christ is. Mm -hmm. So when, when Jesus says that God's appointed him heir of all things. This isn't like an arbitrary choice that God decided to give everything to Jesus. No, this is the only appropriate thing to do uh -huh. with Amen. all things. Amen. Give them Amen. to Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Now here's just something for, for you to think about. Mm -hmm. In one sense, Jesus was appointed heir of all things because of his faithful obedience to the Father. Mm -hmm. But you can also look at it the other way around uh -huh. and, and say, well, in one other sense, Jesus was obedient yeah. because he was looking forward to being heir of all Amen. things. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Hebrews 12, 2. Uh -huh. Looking unto yeah. Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, mm -hmm. who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, uh -huh. <clears throat> despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Uh -huh. So I'm not going to expound much on this, but 
just, just think about this. Jesus being heir of all things. This was a promise that mm -hmm. kept him going through the sufferings of the cross. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, mm -hmm. could Jesus have endured the cross without the promise of heirship? He, he looked ahead to the joy that was before him. That's Amen. what God had through. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You know, in closing, I uh, want to ask the question, why do we care? Sounds kind of sacrilegious there. But why do we care that Jesus is heir of all things? Well, did this Holy Spirit tell us that Jesus is appointed heir of all things just as kind of an FYI, just so we know? No, no this, is, this is something which, which has a real effect on us. That's Knowing right. this yes, changes yes. who you are and what uh -huh. you do. Yeah. First of all, Jesus is an example of mm -hmm. suffering and glory. Mm -hmm. Jesus was the one who, who laid down his life. He submitted himself to the yeah. Father. And we see when it says he's heir of all things, well, that gives us hope that God's a rewarder of those who, uh -huh. who seek oh, him and obey yes. him. Amen. He really is. Yeah. Um, and an another reason is that it makes us reverence him as king of kings mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we know when when we know that jesus has everything it knows that we better take this this man seriously mm -hmm. i just looked it up there's a monarchy of Liechtenstein. do you care who's the prince of Liechtenstein? <laughs> well i don't yeah. but i care who's the prince of all things yeah. Yeah. see yeah. if, if yeah. If Jesus really didn't get much, maybe we wouldn't be that important. Uh -huh. But Jesus gets everything. Yeah. Who could be more important than that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And really, I think this was the, the point that Hebrews is making in verse 1, or in chapter 1, uh, because verse 4 says, being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> So, Jesus is better than angels because his inheritance is greater, a more excellent name. Amen. Amen. Why do we care? Well, we are also joint heirs with Christ. Yeah. Amen. Luke 22, 28. Uh -huh. Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations, and I appoint unto you a kingdom, as my Father hath appointed unto me that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So this inheritance of Christ isn't really all kept for himself. He actually kind of subdivides it. He gives us Amen. to be partakers uh -huh. of his inheritance yeah. too. Amen. So when you talk Amen. about Christ's inheritance, well, guess what? You get a share in that if Amen. you are Christ's children. Amen. He'll appoint it to you just like it was appointed to him. Amen. Mm -hmm. Fourth reason we care is that we are the inheritance. This doesn't just involve Christ. We're not just talking about somebody else's stuff. We're actually talking about what's going to happen to us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. We are going to be given to Christ. In fact, even whether you believe or not, you're going to be given to Christ. Mm -hmm. So this involves you. You better mm -hmm. care about this. Yes. Yeah. Amen. But but if you're a believer, you're going to be given to him in a very good way. Mm -hmm. You're going to have fellowship with him. Amen. Uh, the Lord says in Malachi 3.17, And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spareth his own uh -huh. son that serveth him. Amen. So when, mm -hmm. when it says Jesus is appointed heir of all things, that means he's going to get you. Mm -hmm. Now, Hopefully you really want that. I, yeah, I know amen. I'm looking amen. forward yeah. to that day uh -huh. when amen. me, along with all the church, along with everything else, all things are delivered up mm -hmm. into the hand of Christ. It's, mm -hmm. it's 